Let's discuss the impact of your metabolic health on your joint health. Hello, this is Dr. Siddharth Thamber, expert in rheumatology and in regenerative medicine. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the impact of your metabolic health on your joint health. Understanding this condition can help you manage and even prevent joint problems related to your metabolic health. So let's get started. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions that occur together, increasing your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions that increase at risk include increased blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol or triglyceride levels. Your metabolic health doesn't just affect your heart and blood vessels. It has a significant impact on your joints as well. The excess weight and systemic inflammation can lead to various joint problems. Let's talk about those details. First and foremost, let's talk about obesity, which is connected with metabolic syndrome. Carrying extra weight puts additional stress on your weight-bearing joints, like your knees, your hips, your ankles, your feet, and your lower back. This increased load accelerates the wear and tear on the joint ligaments and cartilage, leading to osteoarthritis. So how does this happen? So the musculoskeletal system is really all about stability, stability, stability. You need stability because that's what allows your joint to move in a full range of motion. And in addition, it's, what's, it's what allows you to move in a very coordinated fashion. For example, when you're walking or running, it's a very highly coordinated activity where you transfer your weight from your hip, from your hips to your knees, to your ankles, to your feet, and then back again. That requires stability and control. Stability is what allows you to function in a full range of motion without pain and with power and strength. Without it, you have instability, which then leads to osteoarthritis. There is this concept in architecture called tensegrity. It's a concept that if you have individual units that are weak in isolation, when you put them together and in close approximation and then compress them, you have a structure that is dramatically stronger. This concept when it comes to biology, in particular musculoskeletal health, is called biotensegrity. A great example of that would be, let's say, your knee. Your knee stability doesn't just come from the knee joint itself. The knee joint has a lot of different structures to it. People just think of the cartilage or the joint lining sometimes, but there's a lot more to it than that. When you think about the structures involved in the knee joint, it includes certainly the bone, the subchondral bone that feeds blood and nutrients to cartilage. There's a cartilage itself that can get damaged, and that's what people think of when they think of arthritis. But you have other structures as well. You've got the joint lining that provides some protection as well as support to the joint itself. You then have the meniscus that works as a buffer within the joint and between the bones. Over that, you then have the ligaments that help to keep the bones tightly connected together and offer support. You then have tendons and muscles the tendons are an extension of the muscles. They provide power and support and control. Above that, you then have myofascial tissue, which is a connective tissue that helps to keep everything compressed and tight together. And then above that, then you've got subcutaneous tissue and then the skin as well. All that is what's involved in stability, and that's what biotensegrity is. If one aspect of that is dinged up or weakened for any reason, what you then have is... Other parts of the structure now have to carry on more of the load for stability, which then leads to more weakness and eventually pain and eventually damage that develops. So osteoarthritis is not just a picture on the wall that shows cartilage breakdown. Osteoarthritis is a failure of the joint structure caused by progressive instability. That instability occurs because of weakness that develops in those supportive and surrounding structures. That occurs because of normal life activities. It can occur from significant trauma, let's say you have a bad injury, but it can also occur from very mild strains and sprains that occur over time. For example, if you're exercising or playing athletics, you may get a strain or sprain, or it may be because of the work that you do or household activities, just carrying your kids around, just a lot of everyday life put strain on those soft tissue supportive structures. 
and a mild strain that can cause looseness or a little bit of laxity or weakness in the ligament may not be something that you notice immediately. And in fact, after that initial inflammation has calmed down, you may no longer have immediate pain. But if that soft tissue structure remains slightly weakened over time, that can be months to years to decades, eventually it leads to overall weakness in the joint and eventually damage in the joint and eventually osteoarthritis. So increased weight puts more stress in the joints because it stresses the stability of the joint. In fact, every additional one pound of weight that you have puts an additional four pounds of pressure that goes through each knee. Next concept is systemic inflammation. So metabolic syndrome is associated with chronic low-grade inflammation as well. This can then contribute to joint inflammation. In fact, within metabolic syndrome, it's very common to also see individuals that have elevated inflammatory markers such as a C-reactive protein. These can exacerbate conditions like osteoarthritis and even autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. There's this concept in arthritis where you compare degenerative arthritis or wear and tear arthritis versus inflammatory arthritis. Inflammatory arthritis meaning conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, and gout where you have tremendous amount of inflammation. So the concept is that in wear and tear arthritis or osteoarthritis, you have predominantly just instability, which then leads to wear and tear. And on the other hand, in inflammatory conditions, you have dramatically high inflammation, and that's the only issue. The reality is that there is a little bit of crossover there. And in fact, in wear and tear arthritis, you do get a mild component of inflammation due to chronic stress on the joint. And poor metabolic health accentuates that inflammation component. There's some other metabolic issues also that can contribute to osteoarthritis and problems. That includes insulin resistance. A key feature of metabolic syndrome can, is insulin resistance, and that can impact your joint health as well. It's linked to higher levels of blood sugar and fatty acids, which can lead to inflammation and damage within the joints as well. Another important aspect is the relationship between metabolic syndrome and gout. So high levels of uric acid are often seen in metabolic syndrome. These higher levels of uric acid can crystallize and then get deposited in the joints, causing a very painful inflammatory condition, intense pain and inflammation in the joint, and that is gout. So managing your metabolic health is crucial for your joint health as well. Here are some strategies to consider. Certainly, weight loss, if needed to get to your optimal or ideal body weight, definitely consider that. Reducing your weight can significantly decrease stress on your joints and reduce inflammation. And as I mentioned, for every pound of weight that you reduce, you're actually reducing the force that goes to your knees by four pounds of weight. So if you lose 10 pounds, you're literally reducing the, the stress and the weight going through your knees by 40 pounds, tremendous amount. Number two is you definitely want to be participating in regular physical activity. In particular, strengthening activities that help to strengthen the muscles around the joint. That improves stability. And again, osteoarthritis is really a failure of stability. So anything that helps to strengthen that stability is, will be helpful for you long-term. Next is diet, of course. A healthy diet, low in processed foods, low in sugar and unhealthy fats, can reduce overall infl inflammation and improve your metabolic health as well. And then of course, there's the if needed, there's also medications. If your metabolic health is poorly controlled, whether that is your blood sugar, cholesterol levels, blood pressure, if you need to get those treated appropriately with medication because lifestyle factors are not working, then absolutely consider that as well. And then also keep in mind here at Chicago Arthritis, we focus on non-surgical treatments to manage your joint health. So physical therapy, certainly to help with your joint function and reduce pain and improve strength. Supplements like omega-3 fatty acids, glucosamine, and curcumin to overall help with inflammation and improve your metabolic health and support your joint health. And if all that fails, then also consider regenerative medicine treatments such as prolotherapy, platelet-rich plasma, and bone marrow-derived stem cell treatments, which can help by improving the stability in the soft tissue structures around the joint and can also help by reducing chronic inflammation in the joint as well long-term also. So to sum up, 
Your metabolic health plays a significant role in your joint health through instability, inflammation, and other metabolic disturbances. Managing your metabolic health is crucial to maintaining your healthy joints long-term. Thank you for your time. If we can be of additional assistance, please contact us via any of our social sites or email. And until we connect again, I hope everyone stays healthy, have a good day, and live well. Bye-bye.